Welcome to the HCI Family of Podcasts, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We share our own original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. Join us for practitioner-oriented content around all things leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with the HCI family of podcasts. Michael Fortenberry, welcome to the conversation today. Hey, John, how are you? I am doing well. It's a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from the New York City area. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about the role of technology in driving sustainability and positive social impact in the construction industry. Uh, we talk on occasion about social impact issues and sustainability. I think this may be the first time we've talked about it specifically within construction industry. So I think this will really be fascinating. And I like the tie into how emerging technologies and innovations are going to help us do this even better. As we get started, yes, I wanted to share Michael's bio with everybody. Michael Fortenberry is the co-founder and COO of Protiv, a trailblazing productivity program transforming project-based incentives. Based in New York City, Michael brings extensive business experience to his role. As the driving force behind Protiv, founded in October of 2021, Michael aims to reshape the hourly pay system. Protiv seamlessly connects production and compensation, incentivizing employees to enhance productivity and quality. This not only ensures fair compensation, but also significantly reduces labor costs for corporations. Uh, so I love everything that your company is all about. I love uh, the angle that we're going to take the conversation today. Before we dive on into that conversation, anything else you would like to specifically highlight or um, or talk about in terms of your background or protive uh, before we dive on in? Uh, thanks, John. I'm excited to talk about this because we view the human side of what we're building as central. And yeah. I think what we'll get into today is going to reflect our view that our people are the thing we need to invest into. And we're going to, we hope, reshape the way that they see the professionalism of their industry, the alignment with their company, uh, the development of great company culture, and the building mm -hmm. of efficiencies that allow us to all be more successful. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Well, maybe we can start there. Um you know, you're you're addressing and with Protiv, you're trying to address a gap. Um, you know, in, in some of the common challenges faced by construction companies. Maybe you can speak to that a little bit, just as a foundational uh, piece to this conversation around those challenges that companies are facing in managing labor, productivity, work culture, those sorts yeah. of things. And then we can dive on into the broader sustainability and social impact conversation. So. If you if you're in this space, um, you'll know this. If not, it's not probably not a giant uh, um, highlight, but labor skilled labor shortage is the number one challenge to the construction industry, not just in the U.S. but globally, and it is only projected to get worse, significantly worse by some measures. We have about a seven hundred fifty thousand worker shortage in skilled labor construction in the U.S. now expanding and we have growing demand so we have an increased need for cons for construction the world yeah. needs 13,000 new buildings every day mm. for perspective and mm -hmm. when you are that's that's not fixing anything we already have that's just building new stuff just to handle you know the new people um, building homes building businesses hospitals and schools so We've got a we've got a problem on our hands. We have an aging workforce, not enough young people going into the trades, and so how do we solve that big problem? Yeah, yeah, and and just like in many industries, this labor gap, this lab, labor shortage, and skills deficiency is a huge issue uh, for most organizations across most industries, uh, and yes, it, it shouldn't surprise anyone that this is is the case also within construction. Um, and I have to say, as someone who worked in the construction industry earlier in my life, another lifetime ago, um, back, you know, as a as a young 18 to 22 year old kind of in that time range. Um, yeah, it's hard work. Uh, I enjoyed it. But I was also happy when I was 
kind of done with that, moved on and did my college education and moved into other things. And I don't really have a desire to ever go back to doing that work. Uh, and I have the utmost respect for people who are in the industry who do that work because it's hard and it's often thankless and it can be dangerous and and all of those sorts of things. Um, thoughts on like how 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 do yeah. how do we utilize technology to start to fill that skills gap and the labor gap? Um, yeah, broadly I think speaking. you go go up a level and and also think back to when you're a teenager or maybe listeners out there you had an hourly job you ever have an hourly paid job where someone you know you're just paid by the hour yeah yeah did you get paid more if you did it better um usually not <laughs> yeah it's it's the reality if you're hourly pay is a structure it's an equation based on time but it's a structure that is inherently flawed because it's time-based only, things like teamwork, communication, uh, quality, safety, production, none of that is incumbent to the equation on how you get paid. The things that actually matter to a business owner when you want to evolve, grow, do better, increase your margins, are separated from the equation on how you compensate the people doing the work. Mm -hmm. So we try and replace that that engagement with things like we manage them, right? We have mid-management and local management, senior management. We yell at them. We encourage them. We do whatever we're going to do to try and get them to behave different. Maybe we have a pizza party. Maybe we have a Christmas bonus. I don't know, whatever. We do things to try and replace the fact that we have an equation of their compensation that doesn't get them to want to do the right things automatically, Unless they are intrinsically motivated, which we can all hope that we hire those people. Good luck. You know, congratulations if you have a bunch of them. Uh, but if you're not intrinsically motivated to always do the right thing the best way possible, now you're falling back to how do I incentivize you to do that? We believe that a combination of good company culture, mm -hmm. hiring as many intrinsically motivated people as you can, and it, extrinsic incentives linked together are the best model for getting great output from your team and building a, a sustainable business. Yeah. Yeah. Well said that combination of the extrinsic and the intrinsic is super important. Um, yes, and yeah, I think back to, you know, all the jobs I had starting, you know, from doing paper outs when I was 10 up through, you know, being a waiter and working at grocery stores and working on a farm and construction and working in call centers. Like I kind of did all those things earlier in life and uh, they, they weren't great experiences, but they were informative experiences. But in each case, I felt like I always brought a lot of intrinsic motivation to it. I wanted to be a good worker. I wanted to do a good job. I wanted to help those around me, et cetera. And almost never did I feel like uh, how I was acknowledged, rewarded, and compensated uh, matched, you know, the effort that I put in, uh, what I accomplished, et cetera. Uh, one of the reasons why, yeah, when I, you know, got a little bit older and, and saved up money and, want, and went to college, like, I'm, you know, I want to go off and now I want to do be the one to create these environments and, and create workplaces where people can thrive and, and, uh, but that's that's not to say that the type of work that I did earlier in life can't be fulfilling, that it can't be a positive thing in the lives of people. Lots of people enjoy those types of careers. It's just because in large part because of the way it was structured, because of the way um, uh, compensation systems, reward systems were in place. I just didn't feel like it was a fit for me. And and so I ended up doing something very different. So part of what you're arguing is let's just do it better. Let's do those things better. And that will attract and help you retain more people in the industry. Um, so we have the workers that we need to do the work. Yeah, we're we're finding there, there's some some interesting thing. We're finding you can get workers to behave different, to actually act different if they understand really three parts. If they understand a, where there's a transparent compensation model that their behavior can impact. So, so if they, have to, they have to be able to see it. It has to be mm -hmm. simple. They have to directly be able to easily correlate their behavior to their compensation benefit. And it has to be frequent. We found mm -hmm. that if you, 
if you're saying I'm going to pay an hourly worker a quarterly bonus, it's they don't think like that. I'm mm-hmm. making 20 bucks an hour. I don't think about my annual bonus. That is just forever from now. I think about what do I get paid on Friday? Mm-hmm. So connecting a simple system, one that's transparent and one that is frequent, you can begin to get behavior changes at the work at the work level, at the, at the, at the job site. And so we found that was critical. Now, we also believe that company culture has to go hand in hand with incentive compensation. Mm-hmm. If you're, if your company's personality is is a foul, right? If you've got challenges with your company culture, performance pay just accentuates whatever you have now, right? Yeah. So if you've got a bad company culture, now everybody's going to be upset about it instead of only a few because the minute people are paid based on the way they perform, they care about more things and they start to care about whether your procurement team has their act together, whether your permitting structures are, are organized, whether you have policies, strict tools, software, whatever it is that they need to do their job. If that stuff's not right, if you have company culture problems, structural problems, now everybody's looking at it, it gets worse. So we yeah. believe company culture alongside of a good incentive comp system is the right model for really uh, maximizing success. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Well said. Well, let's pivot now and talk more about the the sustainability and positive social impact piece. Uh, and as I teased at the beginning of the episode, you know, I, I want to connect this to the role of technology and how we're leveraging technology to be able to drive the sustainability and social impact practices. What are you seeing in the construction industry today? Yeah, so construction as a whole has just begun its journey into being a technologically kind of advanced trade uh, uh, industry, I guess you'd call it. There are a lot more dollars flowing into contact mm-hmm. construction technology now than ever before. Mm-hmm. A lot of those resources are flowing into sustainable materials, um, safety, uh, procurement structures, just building processes, uh, building information management, AI, robotics, the, there mm-hmm. are, we're making big strides, especially at the large construction kind of civil construction layers. We can build stadiums more efficiently than ever. We can build towers more efficiently than mm-hmm. ever. Those things are getting better. But interesting, we're actually slower or at least no faster at building things today than we were in the 1970s. Mm-hmm. So construction productivity is still effectively flat. Now, some of that is because we're using better environmental processes. Right. We're using better safety processes. So things are a bit slower, but they're better, right? So I think you're seeing a willingness of an industry to to pivot towards things that are more environmentally sustainable, while at the same time um, uh, do so in a cost-effective way. I saw a recyclable concrete demo, like uh, some really interesting stuff, right? The things they're doing with, with asphalt, with shingles, um, shingles make up a huge portion of our landfills and mm. recycling shingles now to go back into asphalt for roads. Amazing technology. So there's really in- innovative tech that's being used at the manufacturing levels, at the um, at the software levels to ensure that the right materials are delivered at the right time to the right job site when it's needed, on-time material delivery, much more efficient. I'll give you one that's really cool. It may seem simple, but it's just great. Fill, the simple function of I have dirt or some type of fill, and I have either too much of it or not enough of it. And that is the the nature of construction projects everywhere. You always say, I need to move this dirt somewhere else because I'm digging a hole, or I need to fill this in so I can make something flat. The funny part is that's extremely inefficient, yet there's technology now that is helping connect contractors to each other to where uh-huh. if you have it and I need it, we are now connected through networks online so I can move it around more cost effectively over shorter distances. Because if I have to truck hundreds of yards of fill from one place a long way away, that's very expensive. But wow, I found out that Bob down the road has got the reverse problem I do. And now we can connect. Those That reduces trucks on the road. It reduces cost. It reduces pollution. There's so many benefits yeah. to being efficient at those things. And our industry is making huge strides. Our small role here at Protiv is to 
find a way to get jobs done more efficiently. We we know we don't have enough people, so we're we're using our incentive compensation software to get more productivity from the teams in the field by aligning incentives in, to KPIs. And that's what we're, you know, our role in in seeing worker wages go up, helping them take care of their families, building culture like that is our our small contribution to this puzzle. Yeah, excellent. And you just highlighted several different pieces of sustainability to drive a, a broader social impact. And we, you know, we there's lots of different ways of thinking about social impact uh, or sustainability. Um, and now, obviously, we want environmental sustainability. We want to recycle as much as as feasible. Um, you know, reduce waste, uh, but we also want sustainable positive work environments for people or yes. human beings, yes. right? And so that's partially what you're also describing. Um, I want to talk a little bit more about that in just a moment, but maybe you highlighted some of the types of technologies around recycling, um, connecting uh, uh, workers and, and um, uh, different contractors so they can utilize each other's fill, et cetera. Yeah. I'm also curious just because I've watched, you know, just like YouTube videos or whatever. It's just interesting. Like you've seen those videos of, of like 3d printed buildings and yep. uh, things like that. Like, I'm wondering how much of that is just, you know, kind of PR, like just kind of fun no, to look real. at versus how it's much real. of it is actually really happening in, in, in scalable ways. Yeah. It would surprise you. I guarantee you have seen a building that was built off site in pieces and brought in mm -hmm. and, and put up and you just didn't know it because it looks like any other building. Uh, mm -hmm. We worked on a project um, just North of New York city recently built a nine story apartment building and every piece of that building, all the, the, the units themselves. So those apartments were built somewhere else and they were brought in in cubes it was basically mm. a concrete cube and it got lifted up and set in place. All the pipes and wiring, everything were built in already. So you're just, it's like plugging in Legos almost. You're you're just yeah. plugging in the parts. It's a little bit more complicated than that. But functionally, what we did was we assembled a nine-story building with parts that were built somewhere else, you know, that came in and got stacked up. They went, that project, I believe, went from permit to certificate of occupancy in nine months. That's unheard wow. of. In New York City, especially, you know, to go to be able to erect a tower that quickly, not a giant tower, but it's big enough, you know, garage, you know, parking, common areas, lobby up, painted, ready to be occupied. That is really, really impressive. And what you get from that is this type of efficiency that benefits so many parts of the ecosystem from the impact on the labor force, the impact on the economy, the impact on, on sustainability issues, right? I've got just less trucks, less time, you know, less money involved, less pollution. It's just all better, it's just more efficient. So we keep chipping away at this. Not every, sometimes we put a battery on something that had a gas engine and we declare that we're saving the planet. Sometimes sure. we simply use less of something than we used to have to use. And that makes the planet better too, whether that's labor, diesel fuel, you know, whatever. Number of copper wires we have to put in, the amount of plastic that goes into something. So a lot of impacts that are, are better all the time. The International Builder Show was just full of really innovative products this year. That mm -hmm. Just more efficient, just getting better. Yeah, it, you, you mentioned the kind of the Lego um, approach to pre-built sections putting them together into buildings i've also seen videos of literal it looks like literal large legos <laughs> being stacked to build homes you know things like yeah. that like pre prefab like giant legos essentially yeah. that are insulated etc so anyways i i just shared that because there it are great there stuff. are all these creative things that are happening um today and and they're going to be more and more adopted and the thing is it, it allows for the scalability. Uh, it allows, it's it's one approach to addressing the labor shortage uh, and skills gap. Um, it, that's probably not going to get us to where we need to be. It's not going to, you know, completely bridge the gap, but it, you know, that kind of automation and efficiencies and productivity gains uh, can certainly help. Uh, and to your point earlier about, you know, 
in terms of overall productivity gains were, you know, it's not all that more, more efficient or productive, you know, the building process than it was in the seventies, but in large part, that's due to the fact that we have much tighter safety regulations. We have yes, we like, we, we, we focus so much more on the individual human who's involved in the process that yes, overall we're kind of flat and stagnant, but that means the person's more safe. That means they have a better work environment that, you know, all those things are super important. And that's a you really, you know, any, anyone who's looking at, you know, sustainable social impact needs to also be thinking about the human case, the human impact of, of what we're trying to accomplish. Our, our belief is that regardless of whether you're running a, a you know, drive-in restaurant or whether you're building a, a tower, you've got hourly workers, you have goals, you have KPIs that you're trying to hit. There is likely a better way to align those goals for those workers to their variable comp. And it, it may be different if you're in a restaurant or a retail or a construction space, whatever, but hourly workers, they're not, they're not just, they're not motivated by the structure of how they're paid, but you can fix that. And we found that one one of the reasons that you can do this now, you couldn't really do this 10 years ago, is that digital time and attendance software has become mm, uh, yeah. very commonplace. So we know now we had a labor budget, we have a, some KPIs, et cetera. And I can track, in our case, time. I know how long something takes to do. People clock in and out of tasks of, of specific projects that they're working on. So your capture of one side of your KPI of your goals and the other of actual, think of it as budget and actual, is your now that that data is more available to us through systems, we can begin to create compensation models that link those together for individual workers. And then we use their mobile devices. In our case, we have an app that sits on their phone that shows them what their goal is, lets them play with their goal and set new goals, and shows them exactly what their incentive comp is based on how they perform and how their team is performing. Because they can interact with, they can see it, I think this would be true for anybody out there trying to build a you know a model for their company for incentive comp. Make sure they can see it and understand it. Yeah, it yeah, works. Well said. Well said. And I love what you're doing there um at Protive to to help move this along and to to make um, you know, it may be somewhat modest um uh gains, but collectively as we as we all do these sorts of things we can we can help move the needle and yeah. uh, make things better found, for our workers and make it better for you know uh, the world at large yeah we've found that the workforce seems to have this is in the construction space so far about a 10 to 15 percent mm. productivity quality lift available to them if they choose to right it's but you got to get them to want to do it right they don't just do it because because it's, it's a bit harder for them, right? They've got to put more effort into it. They got to think, they got to bring their brain to work. Right? They have to do a bit more. But if you correctly align the incentive, make it simple, transparent, frequent, you get that. We're, we're finding a good, strong 10 to 15% production lift is sustainable with increased quality at the same time. And so we're seeing wage growth north of 10% and mm-hmm. labor costs actually flat to down. That's a win, right? If I'm paying my crews, you know, paying my workers 10% more, but my labor cost actually comes down because my productivity lift, my achievement of my goals is improved. That's a pretty big, pretty big accomplishment. We love that. Absolutely. Michael, this has just been a pleasure. I know at the time I need to let you go here in just a minute, but before we wrap things up for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Oh, sure. Uh, if anybody wants to just learn more about Protiv or connect, um, talk about company culture incentives, uh, Michael at Protiv.com, P-R-O-T-I-V. Uh, super email me there. Protiv.com is our website. And again, really can't emphasize enough to get your company culture right, align your incentives to your workers, know what your KPIs and your goals are. There is a different gear you can hit as an organization. And if you're struggling to figure out how to do that, reach out. Uh, we've got a pretty good network of advisors and our internal team that can help you be successful heading down this road. Excellent. Thank you, Michael. Again, it's been a pleasure. I encourage the audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Michael can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week.
Thanks for joining us for this episode of the podcast. We hope you stay healthy and safe and please join us again soon.